The Christian has no ground to stand on. All he has is conjecture. All he has is assumption. There's not one scripture in the entirety of the whole Bible where there's a thus saith the Lord, I will send Jesus to die for your sins. All the Christian has is superstition. The ground has swallowed the sons of Korah, the Christians, alive. They have no truth to anything they're saying. The most evidence the Christian has of Jesus being crucified is in the same book when the prophet was instructed to go and misguide the people, go and mislead the people, go and make their ears heavy and their hearts fat. You know I'm telling the truth. We have pulled the ground from beneath the Christian. He has nothing to stand on. Where you're going to run, where you're going to hide, when the judgment day will appear and you will be found guilty before the Most High. And the Jesus you're worshiping, the Isa you're worshiping, will testify against you because you have associated him with the Almighty God. He will witness against you. The Jews and the Christians believe in him before his death and he will return and he will be a swift witness against you. Prophet Isa, peace be upon him. He was God's Isaiah. Isaiah was instructed to go and misguide the children of Israel. And so was Isa, peace be upon him. He was sent to misguide you. Isaiah, the book of Isaiah rather, contains all the prophecies of Emmanuel, of the wonderful counselor, prince of peace, everlasting father, mighty God. The prophet Isaiah put two things for you to see. Either you're going to see the truth or you're going to see the lie. He was the monotheistic prophet. And said that God was God. And that there's no gods beside him. No, I know not other. He tells you that he will not give his glory unto another. The prophet Isaiah presented two things for the Christian to see. And the Christian has chose the deception. They believe in a baby born in a major. That's God. They believe in Jesus being crucified. Although God never said it in the entire Bible, all he has is assumption. And the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, whom they hate was right because he told us neither did they kill him or crucify him. It was made to appear to them so. That's all they had. Their strongest scripture is Isaiah 53. And when they try to interpret Genesis 3.15, they can't even explain it. That was passed down from yesteryears. That was the old scribe, the old scholar interpretation of Jesus dying for sins, which is a complete lie. They have nothing. As I've told you, the ground has swallowed up the Christian. And there's not one scripture in the entirety of the Bible where God says Jesus is going to die for your sins. Although their apostle has said it in every chapter, he is firm. He made it plain that Christ died for your sins. According to what scriptures? According to what scripture? Isaiah, Isaiah 53, Allah has deceived you and has caused you to go astray. In your Bible, he's a deceiver. He put a lying spirit in the mouth of Ahab's prophets. He said, 
If you will be forward to him, he will be forward to you. He said if you walk contrary to him, he will walk contrary unto you. After he has rejoiced to make you his people, he will rejoice to destroy you. That's the God we serve. Al Hadi, the guider. Oh, he's the guide. He will guide you if you are his. But if you are not his, he will misguide you. There's no need to make excuses and try to explain the gospels. The gospels are the gospels. Jesus did what he was supposed to do. He was the Isaiah. And if you go to Luke chapter four, he reads from the book of Isaiah on the Sabbath and said, this scripture is fulfilled this day in your ears. He knew his assignment. He knew he was there to be the misguider. And he has misguided you and he will testify against you. Idolatry is the worship of God's creation. And he has tricked you into believing that his creation is God. And Jesus will testify against you on that day and in that hour. Jesus was nothing more than a messenger. Isaiah was nothing more than a messenger. Mohammed, peace and blessings be upon them all, was nothing more than a messenger. That's all they were. But you have made an idol out of the prophet. And he will be a witness. He will be a swift witness against you in the coming day, in the coming hour. He presented truth. He presented falsehood. The Bible is that two-edged sword. He said his father is greater than him. Oh, yes, he did. He said none was good but the father. But you went for the deception because you are one whom Allah wants to misguide. He has misguided you. Oh, go ahead and deal with reality. These Israelite camps are in the same boat. They are just like the Christian. They have the same core values as the Christians. I wonder what they're going to say. I wonder what they're going to say when the truth of Isaiah is out. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 10 tells you he was sent to misguide the people. He was to keep them from believing in the truth. His purpose was to stop them from being converted. And he put those poetic scriptures out of Emmanuel, a virgin giving birth. Being called everlasting father. Mighty God. When your Bible tells you that God is the mighty God of Jacob. Oh, he wants to mislead you. He wants to mislead you and misguide you because you're not his. You're not his. God loves to do war without bloodshed. Jesus asked his disciples in the Quran, who will stand with me? For Allah. And they said. We will stand with you. And they went on with it. They went on with it. Micaiah did the same thing. When they asked Micaiah. Will all be well. He said yes surely all will be well. You will have victory. He told it Ahab. What he wanted to hear. But in the latter. End of the conversation. Ahab said, tell me the truth. Tell me the truth. He gave him falsehood first. And then he gave him the truth. He said, let me tell you something. Israel is going to be without a shepherd. Israel is going to be without a king. I seen all Israel scatter as sheep that have no shepherd. You want the real truth. I'm going to give you the real truth. You've been deceived. You believed in the first thing that popped up and you got the zunk. 
and you failed to study. The truth was right before your eyes. And now the truth is right before your eyes and you can't ignore it. You've been deceived. You've been hoodwinked. Because you are one, he wants to miss God. Can no one come to God Almighty except God draw him? God is king. Y'all run around here talking about Jesus is king. How can they both be king? How can Jesus and God both be king? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? God is king. God is Jesus king. He is a great king and he ought to be feared. And you are found guilty and worshiping the creation more than the creator. You are guilty of serving two masters. Yes, you is. You've been serving two masters. He tells you in Numbers chapter 23, 19, and that is written by the finger of God given to us by the prophet Moses, who's in the beginning of the Bible, in the middle of the Bible, and in the ending of the Bible. He told you God is not a man. He told you God wasn't a man. He told you God wasn't the son of man. Jesus calls himself the son of man more than anything, more than any prophet. And he told you the truth from the beginning. But you went for the zunk. Oh, yes, you did. You went for the zunk because you are the type that worship the creation more than the creator. You are like Eli exalting your sons above God almighty. But one day you're going to pay. You're going to pay. And now you mad at the Muslim because they believe in one God. The Christians, they believe in two gods. They believe in three gods. Ever since the New Testament came, they've been believing in more than one God because they believe Jesus is God and they believe the Father is God. Which one is God? They both can't be God. God is God. You've had the wool pulled over your eyes. Yes, you have. And God sent a Gentile messenger whom Jesus spoke of. He said the comforter, he will lead and guide you in all truth. Jesus didn't say he would lead you and guide you in all truth. He said the comforter that will come after him would lead and guide you in all truth. And he told us the truth. There's no evidence in the entirety of the Old Testament. Speaking of Jesus dying on a cross for your sins. You would have to interpret it that way. You would have to believe it that way. It's not plain. It's not plain. And the prophet Muhammad came on the scene. Peace be upon him. And he said neither did they kill him or crucify him. It was only made to appear that way. And he says and they certainly they certainly didn't kill him. And when you go back to your Old Testament, you looking through the shadows, you looking through every scripture. You putting stuff in there that ain't even there. Messiah is not mentioned in Isaiah 53. Son is not mentioned in Isaiah 53. Jesus is not mentioned in the entirety of the Old Testament. But you still believe it because you got that hook in your mouth. You got that hook in your jaw. And you've been fished. You've been pulled out of God's word. And now you believe in falsehood. Now you believe in, in the zump. Oh, I know. I know. Jesus is the Isaiah. That God used to mislead you. He told his disciples. You will be fishermen of men. Paul told you about a deception, didn't he? Didn't he tell you that God would bring you into strong delusion and make you believe the lie instead of the truth and you have believed the lie? Oh, yes, you have. 
Show me the scripture. According to what scripture? According to what scripture verbatim that God said Jesus is going to die for your sins? You have none. What's your camp leader going to do? What's your pastor going to do? They have no covering for their sin. God is not into justifying the wicked. He's never been about justifying the wicked. He's never been about killing the righteous to save the wicked. He's only been about punishing the wicked and saving the righteous. You've been deceived. Allah is the best of planners, the best of schemers, and he is the best of deceivers. You've been deceived because you're not his. You're not his. Jesus was God's Isaiah. That's the word right now. That is the word. That is the word. Jesus was only sent to the lost sheep. But the prophet Muhammad was sent as a mercy to all of mankind. As much as you speak bad about him, as much as you down talk him, he is still the same messenger whom Allah has picked, handpicked and chosen to be a mercy for all of humanity. The Christian has no ground to stand on. He has no ground to stand on. What's significant about Moses? You tell me what is significant about Moses. Moses said nothing about Jesus dying for your sin. He spoke the opposite. He said the son shall not be punished for the father and the father shall not be punished for the son. Every man is going to die for his own sins. Every man is going to pay. Ain't nobody paying the bill for you. Ain't nobody dying on the cross for you. You gonna have to face the almighty God by yourself. And ain't nobody coming to hold your hand. You ain't gonna have no mediator but yourself. Your mama can't help you. Your daddy can't help you. Jesus can't help you. The only one who can help you is your good works. And God's mercy. Shalom Israel and assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the truth.